Hello there, Apotec viewers. Uh, Mike Amante here, coming back to you with uh, yet another exciting month of Apotec webcasts. Uh, this month we uh, have uh, uh, a lovely guest on from the great state of New Jersey. Courtney Pepe is here to talk to us about uh, all the amazing things that's going on with augmented reality that she's been uh, using in her own classroom environment, as well as sharing and collaborating with colleagues around the world. So. Courtney, I'm so glad you reached out to me on Twitter, and uh, we're willing to get on here and share some of the great apps and other cool things that can be done with augmented reality. So without further ado, I will turn it over to you Okay. to dazzle and impress us with uh, this amazing technology. It's all yours. Okay. Yeah, it's not letting me share the screen. Wait, can you, if I'm, can you see it now? No. Okay, I'm gonna have to leave the broadcast then to All go. All right, leave and come back. Leave yeah, I'm gonna leave and come back. Okay, and here we troubleshoot and let's go. Okay. So, Aline, how has the uh, how has the list builder been uh, going on? How's that been uh, doing? Oh well, it's it's been it's been doing pretty good. You know, we have tons of people creating lists and sharing them all over the place. Uh, we've seen also a lot of people share on Twitter. You know that we have that tool, and uh, we've also seen a couple of websites try to come up with their own app list builder tools, but they they will never be as wonderful as our very own app list builder tool. <laughs> <laughs> Very modest, of course, here in Apotech we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it took us forever to get that thing working. <laughs> years of work, so we're proud of it, yeah. but yes. All right, so here's Courtney again. Let's, uh, we'll turn it over to you. How are we doing on that screen okay. share? Are we good now? Okay, we're going to screen share. I'm, share, I'm just going to share my desktop. We're going to start screen share, and hopefully... Hopefully click into that uh, PowerPoint there and we should be able to, that's it. Are we good? We are good, yes, okay. we got it, all right. <laughs> so this is Courtney Pappy and I'm talking a little bit about how we've created our two-dimensional classrooms for the three-dimensional and now newly developed four-dimensional world of augmented reality, okay? So when I present at conferences, I generally like to throw these images up and ask people for adjectives to describe this learn these learning environments. I get adjectives such as flat, uh, dull, boring. I get adjectives such as teacher-led or teacher-directed. And then I also like to show this picture and ask people, um, what decade do you think this, this classroom is from? And people generally say like the 1950s, right? And they comment on how their student work displayed in the classroom, but it's in, displayed in like a very flat sort of way. This is actually from the 1980s. So then I like to pose the question, okay, this is more of a contemporary classroom. I say, which classroom looks better, this one or this one, okay? Clearly the answer would be the second one because in the second one, even though it's a similar room, you see that uh, the learner is actually bored and off task. They're not listening to the lecture, but they using their phone to, they found some sort of augmented reality Star Wars uh, triggers in the room, okay? So that's just a reminder to always engage your learners, and augmented reality certainly does that. A uh, little food for thought before I delve into some of some of the apps of what we're going to be doing, but uh, do not confine your children to your own learning, for they were born in another time. A little Chinese proverb for the evening. Uh, I will go through some of my resources at the end uh, during the Q&A, and I believe Mike posted these on the Apotec website, but I actually have an iTunes U course that I created uh, strictly for the purpose of sharing my love of augmented reality and sharing all these augmented reality resources uh, with the world. I've been fortunate enough that uh, through the AD community, 
I actually met someone. Well, I haven't met him online. He's like one of my tweeps. His name is Paul Hamilton. He's an ADE class of 2013 from Australia. And he's doing amazing stuff with augmented reality. And it's very nice balance for what to what I'm doing in my own classroom. So I'll share out some of Paul's resources later on in the broadcast. But uh, Paul and I collaborated on this augmented reality spectral learning course. It's not fully in the iTunes U. Um, the iTunes U Apple Distinguish Educator section yet because I just developed it last week at Educon. But uh, if you email me or tweet me, I can give you the the code to get into the course. And it's just basically guarantee. Um, I'm trying to push out as many resources as possible. Okay, so I have a little um, ooh, okay a video about the changing shape of knowledge. That's just a little food for thought. So this is just, that's just a little intro that I did um, for a, a book that I'm, that's in the process of being published by Apple. And I'm just, I just put this in there because I want us to think about how we can extend and expand the learning um, beyond the four walls of our classroom, which is one of the really great things about augmented reality. Okay, so the first app that I am going to talk about is an app called Lair. It is free on the App Store, and how, how it works is you, you use your computer to make something called an AR trigger image. image. Um, I have plenty of tutorials on how to do this on my, in my iTunes U course, on my YouTube channel, and on my, my website that are really user friendly. So Lair is a great tool for augmented reality for all ages and stages. Um, so I'm going to show you a bit how I use Lair in my own classroom, okay? This is actually the picture that you're looking at, just to orient you, was something that I did when I was going to present at the um, EdTech Teacher Conference in Boston in early November. As you can see, it's only November, but the, the, the walls of my classroom are literally littered with trigger images. I teach uh, math and science in Middlesex County, and I have six different preps. I teach Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Forensics, Physics, and Chemistry. So how we start our day and our learning environment, instead of the students coming into the classroom and taking out a worksheet or me saying sit down and get to work, the, um, the protocol in my classroom is that there'll be some sort of augmented reality trigger image displayed on one of the walls in the classroom. And the students know the first thing that they have to do is they take out their iPads, they um, approach whatever surface the augmented reality trigger is placed on, and they scan that trigger image. Generally, the trigger image takes them to uh, uh, a video on my YouTube channel, a telegami, and what I'm doing with the layer is I'm asking them, um, I'm giving them some sort of task that involves higher order thinking skills. And they're already connected to the lesson and to the content of what we're doing because there's some sort of visual um, 
in the trigger that's already getting them thinking about what they're doing and engaging their curiosity um, and it gets them up out of their seats. So this next thing I'm going to show you is uh, just a little just a little peek into my learning environment. Well, like I said, this was done in November. Now that we're almost into February, there's a lot more stuff on the walls. Courtney, is it possible you could turn up the volume on that video clip? We're having a hard time hearing it through the broadcast. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I just turned up the volume a little bit, okay? Do you want me yeah. to play it again? Play you want to play it? Sure. Okay. Happy and welcome to my learning environment. What I'm going to show you in this series of upcoming pages... Much better, thank you. Okay. ...trigger images that I created in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 classes in uh, the fall of 2013. All of these trigger images can be scanned with the app Lair. Have fun flipping your classroom with augmented reality. So one thing that's really nice about um, about all of this is that it's it's the notion of it's more of a student directed classroom and that they start uh, they start the they start the lesson um, by engaging in some sort of activity that accesses their higher order thinking skills, um, it's more inquiry based, and it's just it it allows the students to have a more enriched content experience. So uh, now another element that I'd like to talk about is the Elements 4D by a company called Daiquiri. Now, what's really exciting about being an augmented reality lover, I, I don't profess to be like the biggest expert in the world on it or anything, but one thing that I'm sure you already picked up on through the broadcast is, is my passion for um, the technology, mainly because what it does for student learning. So in November, I was presenting uh, at the EdTech Teacher Conference, and the morning of the conference, I discovered that there was this new app, these four-dimensional elements uh, by Daiquiri. I was like, oh, I have to put this in the presentation. And then more recently, this weekend, when I was presenting on uh, augmented reality, I found out that the the paper the paper version of uh, triggers that I could print out and scan with the app had actually been made available. So this is like the third day that I've used these in my classroom, but I managed to get some video footage that I put into the broadcast. What these are are these are these are cubes that you have the kids build in the chemistry class. And then this is to test with the students which elements react well with one another. So uh, my students and I took some video feed that we would like to show you. There's no sound to this video. Well, a little bit, but not me talking. So right now you can see that uh, they put we put sodium and chlorine, chlorine together, and they become a compound. So you see each element was an individual element, but then it changed, and it became... Uh, sodium chloride, or what we, work, we more commonly known as, as table salt. So it actually shows the chemical reaction. So now I'm switching it, and I'm switching to fluorine. You see that fluorine is a gas in its natural state, but then you also see that it has a chemical reaction with sodium, and this is sodium fluoride. So this is a really great resource for making chemistry come alive. You know, when we were exploring this in the classroom, not only were my students excited about the process of having the hands-on kinesthetic experience of constructing the blocks, but uh, this gave them, uh, them a more in-depth understanding than like doing a worksheet or just even sh staring at a, at a flat two-dimensional periodic table. So that many, is... Sorry to interrupt. How many, um, how many elements uh, are available? to make into cubes? I believe right now that there are, um, let's see, there are three different pages that you can print out. So, and I want to say that there are eight elements per page. So I think they're up to 24 right now. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And then they also have 
um, they have wooden ones that can be de uh, delivered to you, but that was, I missed out on that. There was a Kickstarter campaign last year that I somehow missed out on. You only got them if you were involved in the Kickstarter campaign, but now I believe they're available for, for purchase on the website. But I was so grateful just with the timing of everything that the paper version became available this week. But as soon as I, I get the wooden ones, I'll, I'll throw that up on my, um, on my website. Perfect. Nice. Okay, and now Daiquiri makes other elements as, uh, I mean, other apps as well. Okay, there is a, an app called Anatomy 4D. This is really amazing. I believe this is something that could be used with, even medical students could use this. So it has, it has great, uh, great purpose and great intent for high school students and in like an anatomy and physiology class and college college students. I'm going to talk a bit about it and then I'll show you. I grab like a 30 minute clip from one of my video tutorials. You can make the um, you can make the the person male or female, and then you can choose all these like blue buttons on the bottom are the different systems of the body. So say you just want to view like the nervous system and the skeletal system, you can turn those two on. Also, you can view it um, with or without the skin system. So you can t take on or off. Um, skin is technically called the in inaugumentary system. So now let me stop talking about this and show you. This is just a short clip from uh, one of my tutorials. And then I'm just playing, I'm taking out systems and putting them back in. This is a great hands-on hands way to engage the more sophisticated learner in augmented reality. So once again, I saved a photo to my camera roll. Now here I'm showing how the systems can pre-populate a great augmented reality act, app from the folks at Zachary. So once again, I think the, the, the implications of this are kind of mind-blowing. Uh, I also believe that Daiquiri is working on some sort of augmented reality app that involves four-dimensional sound. I haven't really had time to explore that, but um, I will be adding that one to the, to, the, uh, to the iTunes U course as soon as I have a little bit of more spare time to explore it. So while we're on the topic of science, and augmented reality. I also wanted to share the interactive periodic table of elements by Popar. Okay, this is another great resource that I ordered the periodic table. You can order it online. It's maybe about like nineteen dollars. I I used to have a QR code periodic table in my classroom that my kids kind of like, but now this thing has totally engaged their curiosity. Just the way that it's visually laid out, even when it's only two dimensional, the visuals are really good. So I'd be up in front of the room talking, and I see my kids kept on uh, turning around to the back to like take a peek at it. So I thought that was really neat that it engaged your curiosity. Now you can use this um, this one in two ways. You can use it to scan individual elements and find out information about them in augmented reality, or you can also turn it into a compound function, and then what it will do is, say you highlight the element sodium, it will only highlight all the other elements on the periodic table that sodium will react and make a compound with. So it's very good in terms of making kids understand um, organization of relationships, periodic trends, electron configuration, I could go on all day, but let me stop babbling, and I also pulled a snippet from one of my tutorials. So this is like something on the left-hand side of the screen, and I'm picking sodium, okay? So it stays like a bright green, right? And now I have to go over to the other side of the periodic table and find something that sodium will react with. So you see, see the elements that it, it ha, is reactive with, they stay highlighted and the other ones stay dark. That's a pretty neat feature. Okay, so this is, this shows the reactivity as you can see. So it has a nice kind of like rock and roll thing going on that um, if you have, you know, some sometimes your high school students can be reluctant, reluctant learners, so it's a little bit of motivation for them to get up out of their seats. But they, they really, really uh, enjoy this app. It's definitely added a whole other dimension to my, my chemistry class. Okay, I don't currently teach social studies, but I am... Um, 
I am a trained social studies teacher, so I wanted to give a shout out to all the social studies teachers there and make sure I provided an app for them. So the app that I'm going to talk about that's related to social studies is called Freedom Stories. This was developed by, uh, as a collaboration um, with, with some different people in uh, Toronto. And what it does is there's a series of things that you can print out and they're triggers to different people telling their stories. People that, um, the slaves that left the United States that ran away during like the pre-Civil War period and escaped to Canada on the Underground Railroad. So one of the things that I find amazing about it is they actually took the primary document of the Fugitive Slave Act and when you trigger it, it has, it has um, like an actress portraying Harriet Tubman, but reading things in her own voice. So there's a very nice aspect that not only does it add like the three-dimensional aspect to the student's learning, but there's also a, a great degree of um, historical voice and historical narrative. So I, I found like a 25-second clip of this. And this is Freedom Stories. So this is Harriet Tubman. So it's certainly um, a little more interesting than just telling the kids to come and take out your textbook. We're going to learn about slavery. And then this one was her reaction to the fugitive slave law. The American government brought a law that So you see, you have the fugitive slave. You have the fugitive slave one that's in the back, and then you have all these different different pop-ups. So, uh, great, you know, great way to make your social studies classroom a little bit more global, a little bit more interactive with augmented reality. So now, now, I'm yeah. sorry, let me interrupt for just one moment there. Um, well, in that uh, augmented reality view, can you interact with the elements that are inside there, or are they kind of um, HUDs, if you will, or can I? Can you can you tap on those on the iPad screen to bring those closer uh, to read them or view that media? Or yeah, is it you can. Just... You can absolutely. You can orient it so you can actually actually read read the document. Yep. Cool. All right. Neat. Thank you. You're welcome. Carry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and so now, um, and a thing that I really want to talk about is the um, you know, the intellectual value of this. I, I get a lot of um, questions, particularly when I present to people that haven't had any exposure to this type of technology, and I get the like, well, this is cool, but what does it do to support student learning? So one of the things that I've tried to do more, and I'm trying to push out more resources, um, that show that it really can be tied to improving student outcomes. Paul Hamilton, whose book I'll present as a resource a little bit later, Paul Hamilton actually did a, a study um, in his math class in Australia where he had students learn the same content. One was through, some, like they went through a web browser, okay, to learn the content. The second was they learned the content through a QR code. And the third group in the study learned the material through augmented reality. And if you look at Paul's book, um, the quantitative data in there about student outcomes were, were significantly higher when they learned the math material with the augmented reality. So that's that's pretty powerful, and I just know um, I'm a big fan of qualitative data as well. In my own learning environment, what I've seen in terms of just engagement, uh, you know, I have one student that had to take Algebra 1 a few times, and that becomes a problem because the student becomes more and more disconnected every time they fail the class. But but now, thanks to technologies like augmented reality and screencasting, uh, he's able to have a different perspective about a subject that he hadn't experienced success in. So that's, you know, if anyone out there, if you have any qualitative or quantitative uh, augmented reality stories of success, samples of success, please tweet them out to me, share them out to me. These are the things that I that I love to hear to support that. This is not just a... a um, you know, a passing fancy. This is one of the next great uh, phenomena in ed tech. So there is an um, augmented reality app 
called String. This one was made a while ago, and it has some uh, different neat things. There's a lot of potential to it. You can see here from the picture on the right-hand side, you can actually draw and doodle on the on the augmented reality, um, and it become and like take screenshots of it. So how I have used this, and I do a two-part blog post on this on MrsPeppy.com is I use it to um, to help students with the writing process. So I had like an after school writing club that I was working with and what we did was we took these AR triggers and we, we used them, we manipulated them and then we placed them into like a storyboard and um, used it to have students who weren't that comfortable about writing or didn't get excited about the writing process to really just get them to put their pens on paper. And we had great success with that in terms of unleashing their, their creativity and just getting thoughts down on paper and appreciating the structure of the story. So um, this is AR string and I'll show you a short like 30 seconds from a string tutorial. Ooh, wait, let me go back to this. Hmm. If I can, oh. Okay. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Okay. This is Mrs. Peppy, and this is part one on how to use augmented reality to improve writing and storytelling. You go to the app string, okay, and these are different trigger images. So this is trigger image number one. I'm hovering above the augmented reality picture that I printed out from the website, and you see I can take this and I can put this dragon in my camera roll as part of the story. So you see uh, lots of creativity with this one, lots of, lots of potential. So I would also like to share another app that I've used with elementary students. Um, there's two apps by Michelin Media that are both very effective. One of them is called AR Space, and that is, um, it provides three-dimensional images of the various planets. I used this with um, students going into the fourth grade this summer, and uh, it's wonderful that feeling when you're sitting around with a table with children, and they're so excited and engaged in what you're doing that like every single one of them comes almost to like climb on you and is like tugging at your tugging at your shirt, tugging at your iPad, wanting to see closer. So that's that's the level of enthusiasm for science and the planets that this app AR Space was able to generate. We don't have any footage of that one, but um, the next one that I'm going to talk about is AR flashcards, the animal. Alphabet, which is another app brought to you by Michelin Media. Okay, this was a wonderful one. I learned about this um, over the past summer, and I was fortunate that at that time I was working as um, a lead tech teacher where I was getting to work with every single grade K through five. So I brought this in with like the pre K, the kindergarten, the first graders. And I was also in a situation where I had a lot of people that weren't, that were. Um, ELL, that English was not their first language, they responded to the visuals of this element so strongly. And even their, their, their classroom teachers were telling me that they noticed a, um, an improvement in their alphabet fluency and them recognizing their alphabet letters after working with this app. What this app does is for um, you print out a series of, of 26 flashcards for every letter of the element. Then you have the student hover over um, one of the triggers. Okay, so you can see this one I have on the screen is M is for monkey. So it pops up, you touch the monkey, and there's a child in the background going, M is for monkey. And then you see this one here is O is for owl. Okay, it's a great way to have students practice the alphabet. And let me show you, I have a picture of Okay, I now the next one we're going to talk about is augmented reality, another el augmented reality for elementary. Okay, this is called Colarmix. Now I found out about uh, this one last last summer when I was at the AV Institute, but since then they have really uploaded a tremendous amount of resources. 
I'm teaching high school right now, but anytime I provide PD for elementary, I feel like every month when I go back into this app, they've just uploaded more and more and more content. Um, Ross Cooper, who's an ADE from Pennsylvania, he had wrote a very extensive post about how he used the app Colarmix um, to really make good connections with the writing process. So I think I'm going to ask him if I can put a link to that in the iTunes U course because I think that's a great, great, um, great material for people who kind of look at this augmented reality and say, where's the beef? So what this, what Colarmix does is it has a series of has a series of coloring pages. Some of them are free, some of them are not. They also have ones that are specific, like when Christmas came out, they did a bunch of Christmas ones. When New Year's rolled out, they did a bunch of New Year's ones. There was a bunch of ones for Halloween, like a dancing pumpkin one. So what the students do is they color in the coloring page, and then you hover about it, hover above it with the iPad, and you kind of see the color mix come to life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you I have a short video clip of what this looks like. So I've gone into the app. I'm scanning the girl. She becomes blue. That's how you know you have the whole image, right? Okay. I'm going to turn the sound on. And here's my girl. And thanks to augmented reality, she's even dancing. Woohoo! Okay, so as you can imagine, like the younger kids. So this is a big hit with the younger kids, and it, you know it's not just something that's that's fun, but it's something that you can use to engage students. What's going on in the picture? You know, um, write write five sentences about what's going on in the picture, or you can use them as story starters. Lots of potential with this particular app. Okay, and so now I want to talk about an app that I'm going to give an honorable mention to, which is called Erasma. This is, Erasma is a lot like Lair in that there is a tremendous potential that you can unleash with this. The only reason that I haven't done a lot of work with this is because the school that I work on with the one-to-one -one iPad initiative, uh, Lair was the app that I could get on the 2000 student iPad, so all the content that I make for my students is in Lair, so my students don't have Erasma. I'm hoping that they can get it next year so I can experiment a little more with it. So I haven't used this app that much, but I hear great things about it, and since I can't provide like a direct tutorial in it, um, I can tell you that in my iTunes U course, uh, Paul Hamilton, who was a co-collaborator on the course, he uploaded some really wonderful materials um, on how to use this. So, the, and Paul is what I consider to be an Erasma guru. Okay, and this is all his information. He's on Twitter at Paul Hamilton Eight, and he also has a blog called Apps by Paul Hamilton. And if you're feeling like you really want to learn more about Erasma and delve really deep into it. Uh, Paul has also authored a wonderful book called Augmented Reality in Education. And the, the quantitative data with the, with the math study with the augmented reality, that is in this book. Um, and it's just talking a little bit more about um, the data that, that how, how augmented reality really triggers and stimulates the brain. So that would definitely be an interesting read for folks that are interested in this. Okay. I also have um, a couple humble works of AR. I have a published iBook that I called Augmented Reality Used in the Math Class, and it's several um, flipped classroom lessons that involve higher order thinking skills. Um, they're, they're a series of trigger images that I made in Layer in my Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 classes in the fall of 2013. And every lesson is linking, linked to a Common Core State Standard because if you're in a public school, you're definitely, um, you know, grappling with the, with the Common Core right now, I, at least I think like in 46 of the states. And also for those people that don't have augmented reality in their, in their environment, also the book, I just, I also provide like the YouTube videos or the explain everything videos and the activities. So if you don't have access to the augmented reality, you could still have access to the, the flipped classroom resources. So that's AR use the math class. And then um, this should be coming out uh, very, very soon. It's just in review, in review in the iTunes Connect iTunes producer process. But this is my soon-to-be-published iBook. 
about uh, augmented reality in the science classroom. Um, and this is actually a bit better than the AR math book because I'm like more comfortable using it at this point, so it's a bit more polished. Uh, and this is this has a, a chapter of chemistry lessons related to augmented reality, a chapter of physics lessons related to augmented reality, and a chapter of forensics lessons. Uh, related to augmented reality and the, all of the physics and the chemistry lessons are also conveniently linked to the next generation science standards. Okay? And it's pretty much all for me today. Okay? So I'm going back here. What do I do? There you are. You see me? Okay. Yeah, it's just say hit escape and you should be good. Okay. All right. Wow. Whoa. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what great stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean, you went through a lot, and I think, um, you know, I think it, it's uh, interesting how it, it you've certainly personally applied it to several big content areas, uh, mm -hmm. and I think, you know, certainly... Um, it's universally accessible, I know, across uh, many content areas. I mean, you hit on, uh, what, we think four in this session. We got some math, a lot of math and science, and we did a little social studies and, and some elementary application. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we touched on literacy as well with the uh, ESL students or um, uh, elementary students with some literacy standards. So uh, the one question I think I have for you would be, uh, you know, a lot of these, certainly when you're talking about AR triggers, you know, the content that, that makes those triggers work uh, has to be provided. So that's somehow developed and it's something typically that the, the person develops their app uh, or reader and then the content is provided and you have to match or have both of those in order to make that occur. Uh, do you know of any developments of anything where people can create their own uh, content that then they can turn into augmented reality. And that's the next, the next step is obviously, you know, a lot of it is still consumption to some degree. Color, color I think, you know, you, you get a little uh, interactive development there on the creation side because uh, obviously the, the colors, you kind of color it and those colors kind of become part of the AR image that appears. Right. Um, you know, I know uh, uh, Rasma, I've done a little work with that, and that you can set your own triggers mm -hmm. and your own content. And, right. and Layer, I believe you can as well, but yes. are there others? Uh, the only ones that I know about right now are Rasma and Layer, that you can create the own co your own content. All right. Um, and, and another question I was thinking as we go through this, you know, I think one of the, uh, one of my, passions as of late has been around the, the whole concept of uh, geolocation, right? And uh, mm -hmm. obviously where you are. And I know, you know, sort of a, a early vision uh, or a real, a real uh, life vision of augmented realities. You know, I'm walking down the street and I hold up my device and I can see Yelp ratings overlaying on top of various restaurants or other content. Do you have any experiences like that that you've seen uh, used in education or have heard any um, uh, other individuals that are that are involved in this field with anything along those lines? Um, I actually just participated in a session this weekend at Educon um, that was led by Chris Penny and Christine DePaulo, who are both 80s from Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. That was more on wearable technology and I'm very jealous of both of them because they both have Google Glass already. <laughs> um, and I'm trust just right now. I'm trying to figure out how I can convince my school district to give me fifteen hundred dollars for the Google Glass because that's the next thing I want to start to um, explore. I'm I'm hoping that the price point goes down like by the summer. Yeah, I, and I mean, because there is augmented reality. Uh, kind of built into that technology, correct? You wear a Google yes. Glass, and you mm -hmm. can kind of see. Interesting. Um, well, and that you know, that's uh, you know, uh, that was my next question too. Sorry, I had several, and I'm sure Aline may have a few. But the other one was certainly a lot of these. You know, the the uh, 
needing an iOS device is probably one of the, the uh, best ways to do this because portable, it's light, you can angle it and move it and use that camera to capture whatever it is that you need to. Are, uh, are there uh, similar functionality or software for desktop Macs, for example, that you can use the iSight camera to then snap a picture for augmented reality? Do you know of that? Is possible, or if that uh, with some of these software developers, are they looking at, uh, you know, computer platforms as opposed to? It's generally something that you you scan it on your phone or your your iPad, you know, your portable device. But that I mean, that's that's certainly not a bad idea. You know, that's something that maybe I'd like to research a little bit more. And it, I, you know, it's, I guess it's. Uh, I think that would be kind of a neat idea. I mean, I'm just thinking sort of the uh, reverse model. So rather than kind of you know, you use your device to go to the trigger, you take the trigger to a station, and then the experience kind of unfolds before you. You know, like uh, I'm, I could see it with uh, name tags or uh, shirts. Look at this. I'm, I'm giving away another million dollar idea here on the <laughs> Apple Tech Webcast. But <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think there's a lot of cool things like that that would be possible uh, where, you know, the, the user Are could you be thinking? the trigger, not necessarily the other way around. You know, does that make sense? Right. Oh, absolutely. Mike, are you what thinking they are. of the Flying Books app, the storybook, where you take a picture of the actual book and then you can look around the pictures? Uh, I think I've seen something like that, but I, I uh, that, that could be something similar to what I'm talking about. I I mean, I'm just thinking, uh, obviously, a, a mobile device is the way to go, but I don't know. It's also late at night, and, you know, crazy ideas fly when uh, the sun drops, right? But, hey, that's how it works. Um, what was the other? Uh, uh, Aline, do you have anything else to add here? Any other questions? Well, um, I, I really love this session, Courtney. Uh, there's so many ideas that you're sharing, and uh, my experience with AR has been very limited, and mostly with... Um, story starters with little preschoolers okay. when you take take the picture with of them with the dinosaur and then you know how did the dinosaur get there and what's the size and describe and use adjectives and and um, activities like that and um, we've used you know Erasma in a couple of moments what we are trying to do is create book reviews for our library where we, you can scan your you, the book covers and get a little book review from somebody but of course that's it's a titanic project and hopefully you know someday we'll be able to get there but uh, I see so much potential in these different tools and things that um, and and just you know being able to engage those children and make sure that they have a way of getting to that information or connecting with that content in a way that's more familiar to them being as they are growing up with video games. Mm -hmm. So this, this to me, um, made a lot of sense in connecting the dots with math. I, I've never seen things with math before using AR. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought you did a great job. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, early on, I know that in uh, a lot of your examples, I'm sure in your resources, You've uh, probably utilized this in some flip classroom mm -hmm. type of situations, correct? Where the students, right, will yes. scan the content and then sort of do the learning on their own. Yeah, and it and it's great because you don't have any handouts and there's no messy paperwork in the classroom. You know, you just go scan and and you're off. And and I even have a thing that I like to do with the students sometimes if I'm really ambitious. I'll, I'll do like four separate trigger images. And then I, I call that having an AR party. <laughs> and then sometimes we do two QR codes and two AR triggers, and then I call that a QR AR party. And that's the tech me. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Well, I, uh, yeah, this has been absolutely fantastic, Courtney. I know that uh, Aline will definitely, uh, Aline was, uh, messaging me here during, she's like, oh, this is great, we got to get her to do more on the site and so on, so we'll probably be in touch to see if we can uh, uh, get you to continue to contribute your resources, but we do have your page, we'll be on appetic.com, it's okay. there now, uh, and I know we'll have a list of all the apps that you had mentioned here. They're up there, they're already oh. on. 
Fantastic. So if you're interested in any of the apps that Courtney had mentioned, as well as her Twitter handle and her website. And her uh, books. And, and her books, links to her books on the iTunes store. So And the iTunes U course. And the course. And, and the iTunes U course. Look at this. Just a wealth, a wealth, a wealth <laughs> of content. I can't even remember it all. All right. Well, again, uh, thank you so much, Courtney, for being on tonight and sharing everything. And uh, Aline, thanks for being able to chime in here as well. So it wasn't oh, just thank me. you for having me. Absolutely, Courtney. Absolutely. All right. And everybody out there who is uh, tuning in, uh, to this webcast here on AR. We'll be back next month with another guest presenter here on the Apotech webcast. Thanks again for joining us.